In this video, we'll be exploring an adjustable modular uh, plywood joining bracket. <clears throat> so once we've opened Fusion, we'll start by saving the file in the appropriate folder. I'll check that I'm on the team I'll be using, so I'll switch to this Makerspace team. It takes a moment to update. I'll use the home icon to go to the top folder collaborative making project, my folder, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'll save this, this will be plywood shelf bracket. Now I can minimize the data panel and to make to, so that this assembly or part is uh, adjustable, easily adjustable. I'm going to use parameters. So I'm going to go to this modify dropdown and change parameters. And I'm going to open this up a bit so we can see it. I'm going to create some parameters. <clears throat> as we create our as we create our part, um, the model parameters will be populated with every dimension or constraint that we, we apply to the model. And we can also make some predefined parameters. So I'm gonna select this plus icon. And the first parameter I'm gonna create is an angle parameter. And that way we'll use this when we start to adjust the you know, it has to be in, the units have to be degrees. As we start to make adjustments to the model, this will make for quick, easy angle adjustments. Uh, and we'll start with 90 degrees. Okay. Plus icon again, um, I'm gonna use a parameter for the material thickness of the shelf. So do thickness underscore shelf. And the material I'll be using is a 0.2 inch thick plywood. And the last one will be the thickness of our bracket. So we'll say thickness underscore bracket. And we can put a value or an expression in here. So I'm gonna relate this to the thickness of the shelf so that it, um, it changes uh, as we change thickness of material, shelf material. So as I start to type thickness, <clears throat> um, it brings down our, our thickness shelf variable. And I'm gonna use uh, thickness divided by four as the thickness of our bracket material. So as we increase thickness, we'll have a thicker, a thicker bracket to uh, you know, theoretically hold uh, heavier objects, okay. And those three will be good enough for what I'm doing now. So I say, okay. And now I can start uh, a sketch on any of the planes. And this is gonna be a sketch of our, of a, a three-way shelf intersection. And I plan on my shelves, we're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut them by hand and round them over. So it's gonna, it can, a slot shape will work for the shelves. So I'm gonna select the slot tool, <clears throat> snap to the origin, uh, bring it over, left click, left click again. And I'm gonna do this again two more times to create the vertical. Drop those in place. Now, these, these, uh, these are not gonna be the exact shelf sizes. They're gonna be the exact shelf thickness, but not necessarily length. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them all equal, both in thickness and in length. And I'll start that by selecting and holding down control the arcs and make the arcs equal. Escape out. I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna select the line while holding control, make these equal. I can drag these out of the way if they start to overlap. And the, the D on the keyboard to dimension these. And the, uh, this will be half of the um, shelf thickness. 
So I'll start typing thickness, select shelf thickness, divided by two. And the length, we can just make these, I'm gonna make them three inches. It's not super important. So now I'm gonna start using the constraints to, to align and hold these in place. And I know I want these two vertical elements to be in line with each other. So I'll select the collinear constraint. And now they move together. <clears throat> and I wanna create a, a boundary for our, our shelf bracket material thickness. So I'm gonna use a circle to create this boundary. So C on the keyboard. And I'm gonna to snap to the arc center. And I'm gonna do it three times on all of our intersecting areas. And these are all gonna have the same um, bracket thickness region. So I'll make them the same as well. Going to control select equal. And they're also not a part of the, uh, if we want to say we wanna extrude the shelf out, they're not a part of that element. So I'm gonna make them construction lines. So I'll control select them again, and X on the keyboard will make them construction. And I would use D on the keyboard for dimension. And the, the gap between these will be thickness of bracket. Enter. So that, that region represents where the bracket's going to be. And I'm gonna bring this down closer. And the location, I played with making these brackets earlier and I found that the location needs to be, like it works nicely if it's, um, if this edge here, or I'm sorry, this, this, this uh, outside boundary is in line with this interior uh, arc here on the, on the shelf part. So to achieve that, I'm gonna use a, a point in two locations, because there's no way to snap those in that position that I described. So I'm gonna put a point there and a point at the midpoint of the arc. And I want this point to be at the farthest uh, horizontal edge of this circle. So I use a horizontal constraint and snap to the, the arc center, so make it horizontal. Now I use the, the horizontal vertical constraint to make these two points vertical to each other. So that aligns our parts, um, our shelf vertical elements uh, horizontally and they're in line with each other. So now they can only move up and down. So we need to define those constraints. And the way that our shelf bracket will move, it's only gonna move, um, the, the angle will change from the current 90 degree position to a 30 or 45 degree position. Uh, we never need to go below 90. So I'm gonna make our, our vertical um, shelf support pivot along this, along this line. So I'll make it tangent to the line. And our lower shelf, if our lower shelf support, if it's tangent to this line, it ends up creating a very elongated bracket. So I'm gonna make it a tangent to this backside circle. <clears throat> and now our sketch is fully defined. It's, it's all black, uh, it can't move at all. And that's not necessarily good at the moment. So we wanna be able to change the angle from 90 degrees to anything that we specify. And I know for sure that the first constraint that's causing this to be uh, horizontal is this horizontal constraint. So as I hover over it, if I left click on it, it shows me what <clears throat> elements are in this region. So I wanna select the horizontal constraint and delete. And we'll see if that allows us to, to move this now. And it does. So sometimes you get, uh, in addition to that horizontal constraint, um, sometimes the default 
uh, constraint that Fusion puts in will be a perpendicular constraint from this line to this line and this line to this line. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'll add in a perpendicular constraint. That's gonna snap it back. And it's this little T constraint that shows up. So if you have one of these T's, you're gonna to need to delete this as well. So again, I'll just uh, left click on it, select perpendicular constraint, delete. And now our, our, our sketch here is, uh, is uh, flexible. We have the ability to move <clears throat> up and down. And you can see that it pushes the, the shelf up and it keeps the lower, the lower portion uh, tight to the circle. So I'm gonna use D on the keyboard for dimension and I'm gonna add an angle dimension. And the value of that angle dimension is gonna be our, uh, uh, our parameter, our angle parameter. So I start typing A, select our angle parameter, enter, and it should put it at 90. We'll escape. And so it's always a good idea to verify that everything works before moving on to the next sketch. So I'm gonna open up the parameters, do this change parameters tab, and I'm gonna minimize the size of this so we can see what's going on here. And I'm just gonna play around with some of these values. So we'll do, uh, we'll do 45, that would be the, one of the more extreme conditions. Uh, and we'll, that looks pretty good. We can change the thickness to, again, three quarter would probably be the thickest shelf like plywood material that we would use for this type of uh, this type of joint. Um, anything bigger and it's, it's probably much too heavy for what these kind of joints can hold. So it seems to flow and move correctly um, as I'm changing these variables. So I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna change these back to the kind of default sizes I had started with. Okay. I'm gonna finish sketch by selecting the check. Let's go ahead and save. And we'll take a look at the sketch. We're gonna, I'm gonna rename this sketch to shelf sketch. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a sketch on top of this sketch, um, primarily to simplify how everything looks. So when I'm working in this sketch, I have all of these constraints shown and I can hide these constraints um, over on the, on this uh, sketch palette here. I can hide and show, I can, I can hide the, the dimensions as well um, to see better. But uh, while working in them, you kind of need them up so you can function them. So another way to, to clean them up is just to have a sketch on top of a sketch. And this is particularly true when you go into much more complicated um, assembly sketches. So I'll initiate a new sketch by selecting the plus sketch, the same plane. And the first thing I wanna do is project forward some of the, the um, geometry that we, had, that we had created in the first sketch and use it in this sketch. So P on the keyboard will project and I'm gonna select these kind of three intersecting plywood regions. And I'm also gonna select our, our uh, offset for the material. Say, so, okay, now we can hide that bottom sketch. And we have a view that, that doesn't have all of the dimensions, but it still has the same functionality as that original sketch. So when we update the original sketch, it will update these two. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and convert these by control selecting and pressing X to um, construction geometry. And now I can start drawing my, my bracket. I'll start by using the line tool, L on the keyboard. And I wanna to snap to these uh, plywood edges. And this is just gonna be kind of an L shape. I'm gonna continue working this around, snap to the edges, snap to that edge. Zoom in, snap there. Come all the way around. And we'll go ahead and create an arc. We can use a three point arc. 
And now I'm going to start to align and define the sketch with the constraints and dimension uh, dimension tab. Um, so the first ones I'll do is I'll make I'm going to make these collinear with each other. Same on the bottom. These vertical elements collinear with each other. Now, it, if if we're not making an adjustable bracket, we can always uh, do draw a line a um, construction line at the midpoint and just mirror everything open over. But since this is going to vary with the angle, um, that that will fail and uh, it won't it won't work for creating an adjustable angle bracket. Um, so we do have to uh, not have symmetry between these two. Um, so now I'll, I'll continue to define these. I'm going to make this arc uh, concentric with the the center shelf arc. And I'm going to make these edges tangent to our perimeter. That is our material thickness or our bracket thickness perimeter. And as it's going black, it's it's uh, it's showing that it's becoming more and more defined. I will use D on the keyboard, and we'll we'll use the the bracket thickness. So thickness bracket. And the last thing to do, we have these blue regions here. We need to define how long these tabs are going to be. I want these to vary with the the thickness of material, and so I'm going to do a dimension from the, the arc center to the edge. And I'm gonna use the material thickness, the shelf material thickness as my, my depth of engagement. If, uh, if we, as we experiment with these, if we determine that we need a deeper, a deeper pocket to hold this shelf, um, we can just add in, uh, you know, a quarter inch or whatever it may be. Um, and I will do the same thing up top. So this will be bracket uh, or shelf thickness. And now we're, we're fully defined. Um, this is a good point to, to check the functionality of our, of our sketch here to see how it expands. So I'm gonna go into parameters and we'll change this uh, we'll do let's say 60 degrees and it, it failed it did not work so we'll go back to 90 and there's a there's a change that we need to make so we don't want this th these two lines we don't want them to be perpendicular to this edge they need to the angle needs to be able to change. So when we were, when I created the, this, this L element here, the snap that Fusion put in by default was this perpendicular constraint. So I'm gonna left click on it, select perpendicular constraint and delete that. And since these, are, these, these two are in line, um, th this one is also perpendicular, so it drives the lower one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select this perpendicular constraint and delete. So now it can move freely. But it's, it still has, it, it's still not, it needs a, another definition to, to lock it in place. So we need to use a vertical constraint. It does need to be vertical, but not perpendicular to this edge. So now let's see how that change parameters works. We'll try, try 50. And that, that moves with it pretty well. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna try a thicker material as well. See how that expands. That's, that seems to be working too. So it's pretty good shape. We'll go back to our default values. And okay, kind of zoom in. I'm going to finish sketch. I'm gonna rename this one to bracket sketch. Now for a, 
for parts that are this small, you don't really need to rename the sketches because it's it's fairly straightforward. But uh, sometimes it's good. It's a definitely a good habit to get into when you get into very elaborate uh, assemblies. So now we'll extrude this uh, part out. Extrude, and I'll just give it a value of an inch. We can rotate around. And we can see now we have this fully developed bracket. And I want to make another bracket. This one represents the, uh, the three-point intersection. So this would be kind of a mid-shelf bracket. I'd like to make another bracket that is the bottom or the top configuration. So what I'm gonna do is M on the keyboard, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna be moving a body. I'll select the body. And I'm just gonna drag it over a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna show our sketch again. And to create this, uh, this alternate um, uh, bottom condition, I'll need to modify this sketch. I could uh, make another sketch, but that's just, that just adds to the file. I'm just gonna modify this one. And I'll draw a line from snap to both sides and I will want it to be tangent with this arc so I have a, a nice clean bottom. And right here we have this little, this little nub right here that uh, I'm not, I don't think looks very good. So to clear that out, I'm gonna include an arc and I'll snap to the end point. I'll snap to uh, this line and then I will make the arc value equal between the two. And default, the default uh, fusion setting was a, a tangent constraint here. If it didn't include that, go ahead and use the tangent tool to make these two tangent to each other. So I'm gonna finish sketch. And now I can E extrude on the keyboard, E on the keyboard, sorry, to extrude. We'll also do an inch. And now we have both of our conditions. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the sketches so we can see these better. We can, we can verify that these can change. So we'll go back down to change parameters, move this over. We'll make this uh, say 50 degrees. Our, our shape updates nicely. Uh, we'll increase this to 0.5. Um, as they're bumping into each other, we can just move these around again, but the, it looks like the shape is, uh, is updating, so that's very good. We'll even try uh, uh, 0.75. Uh, and that works well. So I'll go, I, I closed out my parameters. I'm going to go back and change this to 90 and 0.2. And the other thing to note in the parameters is as we, as we are uh, testing these brackets out, we can adjust any of these variables. So if we want the thickness, if, it's, if it turns out that the thickness is just too small for to, to be like structurally sound, we can play around with these and it should update. So there we go, so we have a much thicker, thicker bracket. Um, I always like to try uh, the thinner first and kind of work my way up. But uh, that's, that is something to consider as we start to play with these and actually use them. So the last thing I wanna do is, is, is clean up the edges and maybe add a, a little fillet between these, these two elements here, that'll give it a little bit of extra strength. So I'm gonna use this uh, fillet tool. And first off, I'll select these three edges. And I'll give it a fillet of, uh, we'll go an eighth of an inch. That kind of smooths that out. And we can use this plus icon to continue adding fillets. Um, and this time I'm gonna select faces. And this just helps, it's a faster way to 
to select uh, more of the of the the modeled part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select these as well. Kind of rotate around. You can do these main faces. And this is going to be a pretty small fillet. It's uh, a 64th of an inch, about 0.15. And it didn't like one of my selections. So I can control deselect some of these uh, to see if uh, it works. So it looks like uh, when I selected the, the plus icon, I'm going to cancel this, that it didn't create a new fillet. I'll do this again. And I'll go back and select these three. This is a 0.125. I'm going to select one edge. There it started the new one. That's the point. 0.15, very small fillet. 0 0.015. I think that's the problem I had before I was, I was selecting too big of a size. It's actually 64th is point is around 0 0.015. Um, so now I will we'll control. I'm going to deselect the edge and just start selecting the faces again. Again, we'll come around here. When you hover over them to select, they should turn white. That, that and that one yeah, it seemed to have done it again we lost that selection so one more time we'll, we'll get this go back <laughs> and select those three. I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna double click on it. Before I export these to the to the printer, I'm going to add some fillets in here. So we'll go to the fillet tool, and I'm going to start by selecting some of these faces. The faces just selects a, a broader region. Uh, we can also select each individual edge, but that takes a bit longer. So I'll select these as well. A couple more. It, and you notice it turns white as you get a select. And it's going to be a very small fillet, about a 64th of an inch, 0.015. Let's see, OK. I'm going to inspect it. It looks like I missed a couple of spots. So I'm going to double click on this on the fillet tool and I'll hold control and and reselect or select these edges that that I missed. I'm going to come around and looks like that one has everything. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll say okay. Um, also, I want to put a fillet between these two joints, it will strengthen the part and it will look a little bit smoother. So I can still use the same fillet tool. I double click on it and I'll use the plus icon. So now I'll select these three edges and this will be a bigger value. So it'd be 0.125. Say okay. And that looks pretty good. So now we're ready to, to export these to the printer. So we'll save. 
And one note about the saving, I'll go ahead and come over here. Let me make a quick change so I can save again. Let's see if that allows me to save. So with this particular kind of part, when I save these, uh, a useful tool in this description here is this is the 90 degree point two configuration. I misspelled that. Anyways, um, I can also put it in here, 90.2. And we'll look at our, our uh, data panel here and the, the um, versions drop down. We can always open this one up later to, to re-export or print again or modify. Or, and if we want to, we can make this, uh, yeah, we can, this drop down will open it. If I didn't have it already open, I could also promote it to be in the top level assembly. So that's just something to note, like the intent of these is to be uh, modifiable and adjustable. So you may have a bunch of different versions of it saved. So now we're in the, in the tools data tab and we'll go to make. We, uh, we will not be using a print utility so we can disengage that. The, the refinement for this print doesn't need to be high because there's not a lot really going on with it. So we can use a low refinement and we'll select the part to print, say okay. And we'll give it a name. So this is a 90 degree point thick bracket for the, uh, and we'll, we'll call it for, this is the middle section. Okay. And then we just repeat that for the other bracket and we'll just call this one the bottom. And now we're ready to print out our part.